Hey, what's going on guys? What's Omar Mellon back again? And today I'm going to be bringing some, or showing you guys some recent pickups, some stuff in my binder. I'm going to slot a lot of these into my binder. And I have some stuff I want to talk about, about the market. And specifically, I found a lot of stuff and you'll see some of it. Um, things that are getting me excited again about collecting. And it's rejuvenating my sort of interest because of how expensive some of these modern cards have gotten. So let's get into it. Um, the first one is a card that I've been talking about for a long time on market watches and things like that on my second channel. I think I've mentioned it a couple of times. I've been wanting this card for a long time. Eventually, I just bit the bullet and bought it. It kind of bottomed out, and then it's gone back up quite considerably. I was lucky to pick it up for a decent deal. You know, still not as low as it once was, but it was a pretty good deal. In terms of the texturing and the artwork, I will say that there isn't a whole lot of texture on the card. Part of that is because of how large the art actually is. But this is one of the best arts in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! And so I'm not too upset about the texturing on it. It's a really incredible card. I can take it out of my sleeve to show you guys what it looks like without the sleeve. Beautiful, beautiful card. Really love how it looks. So I've been wanting this one. It's one that I don't anticipate. They'll give another, you know, this isn't something that should appear in prismatic art collection or prismatic rarity collection, whatever. Rarity collection too. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> so I, I don't mind picking it up and it's one that I really appreciate the art on. So I'm super happy about getting this one. Um, but things like this are not super cheap. And I've talked about a bit again on my second channel, I'll plug it again, but I do market watches and this is one that I think this was probably like 25 bucks or so, but when I see things like Chaos Emperor Dragon, Envoy the End, Invasion of Chaos First Edition, and I see that that's like less than $200, that sets sort of the, the ceiling on what I'm going to pay for a modern card. And even things like this, I've been thinking twice about buying. I just, you know, I really like this one and I, I got it for a decent price for compared to TCG player. So this is a exciting one. Um, moving on, the next one I got, this is kind of a random one. I kind of bought it on a whim, but it's a foil shifted very slightly pure lily. You can see how the star is misaligned. The attribute sign is misaligned. And then you can also see how all the bordering and stuff is misaligned. Pure Lily, um, I don't know, it's kind of a random OTS ulti. Um, it was pretty cheap as well, you know, probably like a $10 card. But um, I don't know, it's kind of cutesy. I'm not super into the cutesy stuff, but it's still a pretty cool looking one. And pick that one up. Next up is a pretty iconic card, but not super expensive now that Sprite has been nerfed a bit. This is the original print secret rare of Totally Awesome, first edition. Uh, a guy had it in his binder, I was buying some other stuff, and then I saw this, and I was, you know, I thought to myself, why not? This is a pretty fun one, and so picked this up as well. And this is sort of along the lines of some of the stuff that I've been looking at. It's a lot of the stuff, either one, uh, let me sit down, that I feel is underappreciated, or two, it's stuff that was meta uh, for some reason, and it's something I view as iconic, but... I, I didn't want to pay the, the sticker price when people actually needed the card for decks. That's totally awesome. Another modern pickup, this is Firewall Dragon. This thing has fallen out considerably since it was uh, first printed in OTS. It got the quarter century secret rare printing in, uh, what was it? It was the tin promos that had as a quarter century secret rare. And so with that printing, there wasn't a whole lot of value to be had in something like Firewall, especially for how cheap the tin printing is. And so this is less than a $10 card, but the foiling looks incredible. I don't mind it at all. I honestly think it's a pretty fun one. Um, I'm a big fan of Firewall, even though I have no you know personal attachment to the card. I just think the artwork looks cool. It's a protagonist card, I believe. Um, and so I'm happy with it. Pretty cool one. Uh, and you'll see that I'm trying to complete a playset of this. So this is the second one that I have. Next up, we've got Junk Warrior Alternate Arts um, out of Maze of Millennium. I think that is what it's called. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Quarter Century Secret Rare. This is a fun one. Um, also not too expensive. Now, this is one with a ton of listings. And so 
I don't know if it was the best time to buy, you know, I was able to get around taxes and, uh, uh, like selling fees and such. So it was a bit cheaper than it would be if I had bought it off TCG player. However, I don't know. Uh, let me know what you guys think about whether this is a buy or not. But for me, the artwork is really incredible. I love the, I don't know, it feels like a, a card of magnitude. It doesn't feel like sort of a side card at all. It's got that look to it. Um, and I think it's quite fun how they release this thing. I get that, you know, it was printed into the ground and there's a lot of other, there are other things in the set that are going to hold the value. I think Bonfire and such are in that set. And so it is what it is, but it's a fun one. It was cheap and I bought it. So that's the last of sort of the super modern stuff, I believe. Um, next up, we get into what I really wanted to talk about. And these are some of the ultimate rares that I've been picking up. So my last video, um, I was happy about sort of the general feedback I got and the fact that people were really engaging with it, but I don't know if everyone fully watched the argument I was trying to make. And also, I don't know if I properly expressed my feelings uh, or, you know, what I was trying to say in that video. Um, I was talking a bit about how some of the print, you know, Konami's reprinting philosophy, especially in the past five years or so, has been a bit detrimental to collecting of modern cards. Um, just in the sense that people don't want stuff to lose value. Now, I buy cards because I like them. I don't, you know, this isn't an investment to me. If this goes to zero, so be it. I still like them. Uh, I'm not going to be ruined by it. I, <laughs> I could go into a long talk as to why cards are bad investments, you know, compare them to stocks, just look at, you know, capital gains tax versus the selling fees and income tax that you'd be taxed under. Basically, there's a huge uphill battle just on sort of government, you know, taxing, taxation in the U.S., as well as uh, selling fees, the fact that these things are not super liquid, and the fact that the opportunity cost of buying a card versus putting your money into, you know, not proven, but something that has gone up in value for the past, you know, hundreds of years in stocks, it's just, I don't see how this could ever be a better investment than an S&P 500, you know, index fund. And so why would I ever put my money that I want to invest into cards? That's how I view the whole thing. However, no one wants to buy a card and then watch it lose all the value the next day. In the same way that when I wanted to buy, you know, a new set of shoes, I can wait longer. My shoes, you know, it's not like my I'm getting shin splints because of my shoes um, are so beat up. It's just that, you know, I want something new um, and my current shoes are, you know, they're starting to, to get a bit old and they're starting to fall apart a bit, not to the point that it hurts me. However, I'm not going to buy shoes if I know they're going to be on sale in six months or, you know, maybe not six months, but in three months, right? I could probably wait the next three months and not get a new pair of shoes. But if I know that these shoes are going to be, you know, one tenth the price or one fifth the price in three months, I'm just going to wait. And that's my point about these cards is that if you put sets like rarity collection, where you reprint in premium rarities, certain cards, basically people get to the point where they don't want to buy most of the year. And then they'll just buy once they have seen what's in the rarity collection, because a lot of the cards that are reprinted in the rarity collection will go down. And then the ones that haven't been printed, you know, there's at least another year, basically, until you're going to uh, be able to see the prices drop. And so it, I think, is unhealthy in the sense that it kind of invalidates uh, a lot of the year in terms of collector and collectability. So cards like this are ones that I like quite a lot right now. I, you know, I knew about Dark Knight Parshath. This is my second copy of the card. Um, the point is cards like this are ones that I find myself going back to because they're super cheap. This card was, you know, less than $5. I don't remember exactly what it was. It was probably like three bucks, two bucks, but it's a f really cool ultimate rare. It's, I don't know, probably you consider Phantom Darkness vintage. Um, cool arts. The foiling doesn't pop super well, but I, I like the card generally. And what I'll say is that 
there's a lot of stuff that I haven't thought about. Cards that I might have seen, but I haven't thought about, and cards that, you know, I think are pretty fun to collect that are super, super cheap. Something like Kwaki Meru uh, Gulungulit. Uh, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Look at the foiling out of this, or on this card. It's out of Ancient Prophecy. Awesome foiling. I think it has a unique art. For me, this is such a cool card to collect, and this was like $1.50, $2. Really, really fun card, and it's just not super expensive. It's just a fun card to collect, and so I've been finding myself going after cards like this, going through, you know, all the ultimate rares that exist, and looking at the ones that are, I think, less appreciated, because a lot of them are very cheap and still fun to collect. And so this is the, the stuff that, to me, feels like the best value buy. It's stuff that's super cheap, so you can collect a lot of it. There's a lot to collect out there, um, but it doesn't break the bank. You know, $1.50, $2 per card, that's not a whole lot. And when I compare it even to some of the modern cards that I like, let's look at this Firewall Dragon, also an ultimate rare, right? But this one costs probably, you know, four times as much as this one. And I don't know that, you know, that necessarily makes sense given all the recent printings of Firewall Dragon. And I don't know that this copy of Firewall Dragon is worth four times more money to my own, you know, personal enjoyment than the Kwaki Meru card. So I've been going after cards like this, trying to find ultimate rares that I haven't really thought much about, but I like the art and I think that they would be fun to collect. And so that's the stuff that I'm really going off, going after these days. Here's another one that I love. The foiling on this one is incredible. The artwork is insane. This is Alchemist of Black Spells. You can see the, the spell counter right there. Um, just an insane looking card out of Absolute Power Force. And Absolute Power Force, I'm a bit surprised I didn't know of this card. You know, when I saw the art, I was like, Mm, that looks pretty good. And then I got it in the mail, and I was like, the foiling's insane on this. Some of my favorite cards are from Absolute Power Force, namely Garlandolf. Um, and so I was excited to see a card like this, which has such insane foiling. And there are still cards like this out there, where someone who's been collecting for four years basically is still seeing cards that I've probably passed through it, I've seen it, but I didn't appreciate it. And so I'm going after cards that I haven't appreciated yet. And this is one of them. Um, I actually have another copy. The seller sent me a first edition lightly played copy instead of a near mint unlimited. I said, you know, I contacted them. They're like, you know, the difference is a couple bucks. It's not really a big deal. So I'm keeping it. And they look so, so cool. It's just... There are still cards like this out there. And maybe you know about this card and you're like, what are you talking about? Everyone knows about that card. But for me, stuff like this, I still haven't appreciated until now. And so I'm, instead of chasing after stuff that I know exists and I know I'll appreciate, I'm trying to find stuff that is not, you know, unknown to the world, but stuff that I personally haven't really thought about too much. Actually, before I go to this one, I actually have another Kwaki I'm going to, I, I saw the art on this. I was like, that looks pretty cool. And the foiling looks insane. And so I'm going to complete the playset for sure. It's just, it's a fun card with a unique art. I like that. And it's $1.50. Awesome. That, that means that I can go after a lot of these things because a lot of them exist. You look at a lot of the mid era stuff, like five D's later GX, although later GX had light of destruction and stuff. So you know, there's not a whole lot from Phantom Darkness and Light of Destruction that hasn't been seen, but some of those 5D sets, some of the mid-era stuff, people just really glossed over. And so there's a lot of cool stuff, and I have more stuff coming. Um, I'm going on vacation, so basically I wanted to make the video now. You'll, it'll probably get uploaded after I'm home, but I didn't want to have to worry about it right before a vacation. And... Because of that, I just went ahead before all of my old orders, excuse me, came in. This is the last card I'm going to show, and then I'm going to show off some of my binder. We've got Yellow Baboon, Archer of the Forest. Again, I just like how this thing looks. Cool foiling on it. This is out of, uh, what? What is this? I'm blanking. It's the one with, I think, Majestic Star Dragon. Just Majestic Stardust Dragon, something like that. That ghost rare. I'm really blanking here. Stardust Overdrive, I think. 
Yes, I think that's Stardust Overdrive. <laughs> but cool ultimate rare out of there. And then we'll get into some of um, the stuff in my binder because I'm going to put some of these in. This will go into this binder, all the sort of more modern stuff. So I think these three are ones that are going into this binder. The rest I'll have to get out another binder. I'll put those away, not on camera. So let me put those over there. So got a new top deck binder, um, or new, it was a couple months ago, actually maybe like three months ago at this point, but I generally like top deck quite a bit. It's one of those premium binders that I can get behind and because it's in the US, it's not like Dragon Shield where <laughs> I have to wait for Dragon Shield to get more stock out every couple of years because it runs out basically. So I guess I can put Honest right here. I'm debating whether I want... Oh, wait, no. I'm an absolute fool. Honest goes next to Dark Honest. So let me do that. Let me show, shine some light on that. So there we go. I'm thinking of putting another Dark Honest right here. I think that's what I'm going to do. But Honest such a cool card. Really nice addition to it. I'm happy about it. Mm, yeah, that looks nice. I really like the contrasting Dark Honest and Honest there. So that's the Collector Rare I have. Moving on. What else do we have? I don't think we have any more Collector Rares. You guys can see some of the pages. I'm not going to show everything off because I think I've shown this binder before. Got some Starlight Rares here. You can't see the Yadas at the top. So be it. All right. So here... You guys can see some Magicians of Bonds and Unity, some other quarter century secret rares. Um, but, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> uh oh, hopefully that didn't give anyone motion sickness. I still have more pages for some quarter century secret rares that are extra deck monsters. So I'll put the Junk Warrior in the center here. That's pretty cool. We've got Nightmare Unicorn alternate art. And then the final cards that I have are, oh, I miss one? Where did my, uh, oh, <laughs> there it is. You can tell I'm, I'm scrambling here. Getting towards the end of the video, if everyone's still around, let me know. Ghost Ray is right here. Got a Blue Eyes Ultimate Cyber Dragon that you can't really see. All right, so up top we have Firewall Dragon. I actually think that the foiling is Oh no, it's identical on the two Firewall Dragons, so I'll put my Firewall up top. Show you guys that quickly. So, very, very cool, I'm right above Black Luster Soldier. Hopefully I don't tip it again. There we go. And I think before that, I forget if I left an extra page for, uh, oh no, I didn't, okay. We have a page for Ultimate Rares, so we'll put Pure Lily in there as well. And so that concludes this video. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I'm always having fun. Oh, actually, no. I get to put... I think I'll put Totally Awesome in here. I can't remember if I should. I'll just put it in here. Why not? I'll figure it out later. But hopefully you guys did enjoy. Leave a like, use my TCG player link, eBay link, all that stuff. Been your boy, Watch Melon. Peace out.